So for me, holding something like this is definitely not a way to show respect. The correct way to actually do it is like this. I cannot. <laughs> And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. So recently, guys, I've actually made a YouTube shorts talking about the taboo you should never do at katana sword shops. It was a video about how to properly hand a katana to someone, but the responses I got from the viewers was really surprising for me. Let's take a look at the comments together. What if the katana just falls onto your head, though? Might I ask why? Is it something like that this is just how those in the Japanese culture hands back katanas? If anything, that that looked even more dangerous to the one who gave the katana though. That seems way too dangerous. One fatal mistake and it drops on your head. Now to be honest, I was very very surprised to receive these comments because I've been training the katana for about full 7 years almost on my 8th year now and this is the only way that I've been taught how to hand a katana to someone safely. So I was very surprised and also very sorry to the people watching my video. The YouTube shorts is only a minute long and it's definitely not long enough for me to explain everything and it probably made a lot of confusions. So today I'd like to answer some of the main questions I received in the comments and explain and demonstrate the why we hand the katana like the way I explained in my short video. And also I got a little bit nervous after um, making that video because so many people were against me, but it was looking on the internet, I found these books made by katana swordsmiths. And yes, in these books too, they explain that this is the correct way to hand a katana to someone. There's actually a picture here that explains it. And there are some katana associations that preserve the culture of katana that talk about it on their websites too. So I'm pretty sure this is a common way to hand a katana in Japan. So it might feel a little bit strange from your culture, but I hope you can understand that this is something that has been carried on in Japan for a very long time. And I think it's best we just simply enjoy the differences too. So then, how about we get started? In this channel, we can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So then, let's start answering the question from the comments. So the first question that I received the most in the comments was, why don't you just point the katana downwards to hand the katana to someone? I'm guessing that's the general way of handing a European sword possibly, but for the katana, the problem is, traditionally in Japan, we sit on the floor like this. This is probably the most important reason why we hand the katana pointing upwards, but if we try to point the katana downwards here sitting on the floor, be poking the floor like this already. I'm already stabbing my floor if I have it at this height. And so it's definitely not very um, convenient, comfortable like this. So that's probably the most important reason why it had to be pointed upwards. And second, it's also to show respect to your katana and also to the person who let you see the katana too. If you put the blade downwards like this, for me, this really doesn't feel right. Putting something important somewhere that's lower than your eye sights is a sign of disrespect. And as you guys know, um, the katana was a symbol of authority for the samurai. It was called the soul of the samurai. And even today, it is something we consider as a deity almost, as I explained in my previous videos. So you need to try to handle it with respect as much as possible. And that is the reason why you try to point your katana high up like this. And also one of my channel members who is training in Yaido in the US explained to me that this is the way that he was taught in the US too. And he also explained that this is a sign of trust, not just respect, but trust to the person you're handing it to. Which means in the first place, you should not hand your sword to someone who you do not trust. Question number two from the comments was, why don't you just put it back into the sheath? To hand it safely. Now some people were replying to those comments but you guys are correct. There is a proper way to put the katana back into the sheath and if you don't know how to do that there is a risk of for example stabbing your fingers or damaging the blade or the sheath. So the topic of the video was taboos you shouldn't do at katana sword shops. So if you're for example not trained in katana sword skills the shop staff would usually not let the customers pull out the katana and put the katana back into the sheath on their own. I was actually pulling the katana out of the sheath and putting it back on my own at 
Hosando, which is which is my most favorite katana shop in Kyoto. But that was because the shop manager knows that I trained in Yaido for a while and I know how to handle the katana properly. He was explained that usually he would not let the customers do it. But then you'd probably be thinking, how do you do the sheathing and unsheathing properly, right? When you have the katana like this, you actually should never pull the katana out sideways. This is very, very dangerous. If you, you might hit something on, the, on your side as the person sitting next to you, maybe there might be a wall nearby, which I actually have a wall nearby right now. The correct way to actually do it is like this. So you're kind of pointing to your left forward front there, and this is a proper way to pull the katana out. But when you do this though, you shouldn't put too much power into your hands and make the katana rattle like this when you try to pull the katana out. That means that the blade and the inside of the sheath is hitting each other and that could damage the sheath and the blade. If you have it this way, you can see the sharp side is upwards, right? If you just pull it out naturally without putting any power into it, the back side of the katana, which is the bottom side here, will not damage the sheath. So don't put too much power into it. You just naturally pull it out and it doesn't make any sound like this. And after examining the katana, when you want to put the katana back, you do it the same way. You put the sheath in front of you like this, you put the tip in first, and then gently, without putting too much power into your hand, just put the katana back. Now again, if you put too much power from here, is not good. But again though, even if you know how to do this, I'm pretty sure at katana sword shops, you will be handed the katana already unsheathed. Because no matter how much you say that you're experienced in, for example, Yaido or Kenjutsu and such, the shop managers or the shop staff will not be able to confirm that, right? So usually, even if you are trained, unless you're a very, very famous master of the skills or, or something, you would usually be handed the katana already out of a scabbard. Now, the third question is, what if the katana falls onto your head. While I was reading that comment though, I really felt that it's almost like asking, when you hand a gun to someone, what if I accidentally shoot myself? But just like a gun, it wouldn't happen with a katana either. If you held onto a katana like this, even if it was really heavy, it's almost impossible for the katana to tilt towards yourself. If you have a firm grip of your katana with your right hand, you can see that it's almost impossible for it to tilt towards your head. Please try it with something long. It could be anything, like some kind of rod or anything that's inside the house. You can hold onto it in front of you and pull it like this, as I'm doing it right now. Try tapping the object towards you. You can see that if you have a firm grip, it's almost impossible for it to tilt towards your head. If I were to, for example, try to make this hit my head, I would be letting go of my hands. So you wouldn't do that when you're holding onto a real katana. You, of course, would have some kind of nervousness, right? So you wouldn't do that, especially, as I explained, you would use your both hands like this. So it would especially not happen. However, as many people did talk about, the katana could be much, much heavier. For example, if it's a very, very long katana, it might be a little bit unsafe. So in that case, there are some people who explain that you could hold it like this too to be a little bit more stable. You can hold it like this. And there are also a lot of people who worried saying that what if someone pushes the katana towards you, it'll be very dangerous. Well, first of all, you shouldn't try to hand a katana to someone who you can't trust at that level. And the person that showed you the katana, if that person wanted to attack you in the first place, he or she should have done it before handing the katana to you, right? So I thought that wouldn't happen, but I do have Harumi here to help me out and demonstrate this. So then, Harumi, uh, could you try to push this handle towards me? It's impossible to try to tilt it towards me, right? My arms are completely stretched out. My bones will not let the blade towards me at all, yeah. yeah. And if we got into this situation, you should react to it differently, obviously, <laughs> yeah. So it would be very, very unsafe. Someone that's around you should help you out or try to, to stop the trouble, yeah. Let me have Harumi do this too. Harumi is going to be handing the katana towards me. Thank you very much for letting me see the katana, Shogo. And if, for example, I try to press this towards her... See? <laughs> it's impossible, isn't yeah. it? See? I cannot... <laughs> <laughs> I cannot try to tilt the katana towards Arumi. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's physically impossible. Mm. Yeah. And if someone actually tried to, to push the katana towards you, you should, for example, just let go and run away before the person, other person does That's anything true. to you. Mm. And again, that would never happen. <laughs> 
Harumi was saying too, it might look a little bit dangerous because pointing upwards, you know, the blade is right here, you know, in front of our faces. But again, that's a way of showing respect higher than our faces, higher than our eyesight, is to show respect to the katana and also to the owner. In, in reality, physically, it's not dangerous. It might look dangerous, but it's actually not. I just wanted to prove this to you with Harumi's help. And by the way, as a lot of people were telling me to point the katana downwards, again, as I explained earlier, it's uh, physically impossible because there's a floor. But for example, if you did do it, you point the blade towards yourself, and for example, if you have the blade downwards to hand the katana to your, the other person, Harumi, can you try pushing the blade towards me? Push it towards me. Yeah. See? <laughs> I can't stop it, you know? Because this side is my pinky. This side was my thumb, so it's much stronger. Mm. So if Harumi were to press this blade towards me, mm. no matter how much I press back, I would definitely be poked, <laughs> you know, and stabbed very easily like this. Let me yeah. try let me try stopping it, yeah. Mm. See? It's much, much more dangerous than holding yeah. it upwards. And also it would eventually slip out of your hand too. Oh. Pointing it downwards, that's another reason why it's very dangerous. You can't stop the other person from stabbing you if this situation happens. And from here, you really can't do anything because the sharp side is facing towards you, the point is facing towards you, so holding it upwards is obviously mm. much, much safer. Even this short wakizashi. Like my, my body is uh -huh. laying to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but your bone structure you know, prevents mm the blade from tilting towards yourself, so. Mm. Then finally, the fourth question. Why don't you use both hands and hold it sideways? Now, you actually would do that when the katana is in the sheath. You would have the ska handle on the right side and also the sharp edge towards yourself to hand the katana to someone like this. If you try to hold onto the katana sideways, the same situation like this, you would have to touch the blade to do that, right? However, touching the blade with your fingers will cause the blade to rust, as some people have pointed out for me in the comments. And again, you're taking a look at a katana of someone else's katana, right? So you should never do that. That would be very, very disrespectful to the owner of this katana. And also, the balance is really, really difficult too to hand it sideways. And of course, there is a risk of yourself cutting your fingers, so it's very dangerous. By the way, there is though a way to appreciate and examine the katana using both hands, and that is if you're using this hukusan. It's a proper cloth that you use so you don't damage the blade when you check it. The katana sword shops may provide these to you. For example, it's a very heavy katana if it's really long. It's really difficult to examine with just one hand, right? For example, in that case, you could borrow these hukusa if they have it to use both hands to examine the katana too, like this. And then you might think, well, if you have the hukusa, why can't you use it to hand the katana back to the person using both hands, right? I guess this could be possible, using both of your hands to hand the katana back to someone. But in this case, again, the other person needs to be also using a fuksa too. If the person, other person doesn't have something that he can hold the blade safely with, it's impossible for him to safely take the blade away from you, right? So again, in the end, the best way, we come back to this form again. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. You know, I explained in one of my previous YouTube shorts that the thing I hate about Japan, I talked about it once, is that Japanese people never ask why. And me too, to be honest, I never asked why to myself about why we hand the katana like this. So I'm really, really happy that the comments that you left for me gave me a chance to deepen my understanding towards this rule that we are all taught as katana trainees. So if you have any other questions about katana or anything that I've made videos or, or YouTube shorts before in the past, please let me know and I'll be happy to make a full video like this so I can explain a little bit more about the details of why things we, are, we do the things we do. So then everyone, if you enjoyed watching this video, it'd be great if you can give us a like and also hit the subscribe to enjoy more content. And we'll see you in my next video where I talk about katana. Hopefully I'll make a video next time how to examine and appreciate the katana properly. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.